This is Dave VE3OI, and I just wanted to talk about a project which I've been working on for the past uh, six or seven months, and I'm just starting to get back to it now. And uh, what it is, it's an iosonde, and what it is, it's a me mechanism to probe the ionosphere uh, to figure out what the maximum usable frequency is. So um, basically the way this works is that uh, you're sending up a pulse, you're sending up a signal, uh, goes uh, directly vertical, hits the F layer, and for this I'll be using uh, 40 meters, so um, any reflection is coming off of the F layer, then the return signal is coming back down, and by timing, the time it takes the signal to go up and come down, I can determine the height. So for example, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The height of the F layer is roughly between 150 to 500 kilometers. So the time it takes to go up is about half to 1.7 milliseconds. And the time it takes to go up and down is about 1 to 3.3 milliseconds. So basically what you would do is that you would start at the lower edge of the 40 meter band, send up a signal, look for a return, plot it. Then you'd switch to the next frequency, go up in frequency, repeat the same thing and plot it. And eventually, as you go up in frequency, you'll find where there is no return signal coming back and that that is your maximum uh, usable frequency. So the requirements for this um, piece of equipment I'm going to build is that number one, we need to transmit and switch to receive between one to three milliseconds. That's how much time it takes to uh, do a, a, a return flight. I'll have to wait for a return for about 10 milliseconds. So send a pulse, a switch over to receive, and then wait 10 milliseconds for a return. If I don't get a return, I move to the next frequency. Um, so what I need to also do is I'll need to isolate the transmit and receive um, um, modules because I'm using the same antenna. So what I'm planning to do, use is our pin diodes to uh, uh, separate, uh, to isolate, receive and transmit, and as well use a MOSFET for powering up and powering down uh, the amplifier. So I'd like to just briefly go over the design which I'm going to be uh, using. So basically on the receiver side, I'll have the antenna feeding a switch. Uh, that'll be a pin diode that's controlled, that's turned on and off by my microcontroller. That'll feed a low noise amplifier, which will then go through a bandpass filter. There'll be a second uh, switch here, which I can uh, um, uh, stop the signal from proceeding. Uh, that'll go through a, another low noise amplifier which will feed into my mixer and for this I'm planning to use an NE602 and that'll be a local oscillator which will be coming from my SI5351. Again that, lo that local oscillator will be controlled by the uh, microcontroller. So the output from the mixer will be fed to a low noise amplifier and then a narrow bandpass filter. I'll be using a crystal filter here and I'll be using 4.9 uh, megahertz uh, uh, crystal so the IF will be 4.9 megahertz. That'll feed into another low noise amplifier and there'll be a final switch, um, a, a pin diode switch which feeds into an 8307 log amp and uh, the microcontroller ADC will be uh, taking readings from that to see whether a signal is present. On the transmit side I'll have the uh, an oscillator uh, uh, the SI5351 which will be controlled by the microcontroller and uh, as I said that 5351 will also be feeding the mixer. So the output from one of the outputs from the SI5351 will be feeding to a software switch which again is uh, controlled uh, turned on and off by the microcontroller that'll feed to a 5 watt amp and for the 5 watt amp um, using a um, the, an, an older amp uh, that uh, Diz designed over at Kits and Parts. I'm using one of his uh, modules, which will just plug right into my board. 
And so that will be powered up using a MOSFET. So the microcontroller can power on and power off that amp. And uh, then there'll be another switch, um, which the microcontroller will uh, turn on and off. And that feeds into a low pass filter and finally to the antenna. Now the, um, receive, the receiver will be connected to this point here. And uh, uh, so there'll be a switch here which will um, attenuate any of the signals coming out from here. So basically, the way this would work is that during transmit, all the switches will be turned off, so nothing uh, gets fed through. The amp is powered up, these switches are enabled, and I feed a signal to, through. Then at some predetermined time, I shut everything off here, and I uh, switch over to receive. I enable all these switches, and I listen to see if there's uh, anything coming through and the 8307 is picking it up. So I'd like to walk you through my proof of concept uh, build I've done. So what I've got here is I have got my main receiver board which uh, has the uh, pin diode here. It has a low noise amplifier. Here's the bandpass filter and I'm using a uh, bandpass filter from uh, Hans Summers and uh, that feeds the NE602 uh, which then comes out here the, um, and feeds into my uh, crystal filter and if you look here uh, there there is a low noise amplifier coming in and uh, um, a matching transformer feeding into the crystal filter uh, another matching transformer and feeding another low noise amplifier and this right now is going out to my scope I don't have it connected to a uh, 8307 so also too the uh, uh, the pin diode on uh, this board is being controlled by this wire here I've got it just directly connected to my um, uh, voltage regulator there and here's a header which will connect to my uh, microcontroller but uh, right now I've just got this uh, alligator clipped, uh, uh, connected uh, to power the, uh, the uh, pin diode. So I'm using this uh, signal generator here, and I've got a previous uh, video I posted about this generator. So I'm using it to generate the local oscillator, which is feeding into the, the NE602 here. So with everything powered off, there's a flat line on my uh, scope and uh, everything's powered off the local oscillator is not generating a signal my amps powered off so I'm gonna power uh, the amplifiers so now all the amplifiers are, are are getting power I'm going to send a signal through so my XG3 is generating the antenna signal and by the way the XG3 is coming out and that's being fed to a, a low pass filter so I'm getting basically a, a sine wave coming in to the, um, the antenna port of my uh, receiver so and again there's, uh, there's nothing coming out of the scope so now I'm going to go and enable my, my local oscillator so that's generating a signal and I've got a signal coming out uh, on my scope there so I'm going to turn off the local oscillator, it's gone, turn it back on, and I'm going to turn off the XG3, and turn it back on, and I'm now going to change the frequency of my local oscillator, and I'm changing it by 10 hertz, and you can see the, uh, the crystal filter is doing its job. And uh, so there I can tune it right into the crystal filter passband. That's the maximum signal there. So that appears as if it's uh, working. The next step is now to put both of these boards on uh, one board, combine it into one board, and I'm going to add another couple of low noise amplifiers so that I can um, um, receive much uh, weaker signals coming in uh, uh, to the uh, receiver. Here I've got the, uh, that's my transmitter 
uh, the, the power amp uh, module for my uh, transmitter and uh, this is from uh, from kits and parts you can see there from kits and parts and it's an older uh, 5 watt amplifier so I'm planning to use that I've tested it and it works so just one final thing is just about the pin diodes I did some testing with the pin diodes and what I found that each pin diode gives me an isolation of about uh, 40 dB and an insertion loss of about 1 dB. If I, I have two uh, pin diodes cascaded uh, together, I'm getting about a 70 dB um, um, isolation, which is pretty good. 